Hi, good evening. Um, today I'm going to read an article about self-efficacy. Uh, its definition, theory, and eventually a quiz. quiz. I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading uh, this article from EducationPortal.com. So let's begin. Self-efficacy. Lesson. Learn what self-efficacy is and how it affects your motivation to accomplish specific tasks. Learn about Albert Bandura's contribution to the concept of self-efficacy and how it is it has shaped contemporary psychology. We also recommend watching self-efficacy and locus of control definition and meaning and self-efficacy efficacy and self-monitoring in organizational behavior. <coughs> the power of self-efficacy. There is an old and frequently told story of a track coach who wanted to teach his team to run faster. No matter what the coach did, no one seemed able to beat his or her best time. One night, who unbeknownst to the team, the coach moved the finish line, effectively making the track 10 feet longer. Effectively making the track 10 feet longer. The next day, the runners clocked slower times than they usually did because the track was now 10 feet longer. Discouraged because they knew they could do better, the runners practiced and practiced and Till they could get, gain achieve their old times. At this point, the coach let them in on the secret that he had moved the finish line and informed them that they were now running faster. The coach demonstrated that when the runners thought they couldn't go any fa faster, they didn't, and when they knew they could do better, they did. The coach proved the power of self-efficacy. Bandura's self-efficacy. Psychologist Albert Bandura defined self-efficacy as an individual's belief that he or she will be able to accomplish a specific task. He believed that an essential component to accomplishing something is our confidence that we can. Bandura referred to the self to self-efficacy as the mind's self-regulatory function. It tells us when to try and when to stop. If you do not believe something is possible, you are less likely to attempt the task and more likely to give up early if you do. Whether you think that you can or that you can't, you are usually right. Henry Ford. Self-efficacy drives your motivation, just as you have different degrees of motivation depending on the task. So, also do you have different levels of self-efficacy? You may have high self-efficacy when it comes to your job because you have done it for a long time. You may have low efficacy in regards to school because you struggle to make passing grades. The level of self-efficacy you have when you begin a task has great deal to do with what to do with whether you will successfully complete it. The four, self-efficacy. From level zero to six, school, job, romance, dancing, and sports. Sources of self-efficacy. It's a logical assumption that if completing an activity is related to our belief that we can accomplish the task then increasing our self-efficacy should enable us, enable us to be more successful at finishing the things we attempt. The, this begs the question, where does self-efficacy come from? If we can understand where self-efficacy comes from, then we can take steps to increase it. According to Bandura, self-efficacy is a constantly evolving process from childhood to old age. Self-efficacy increases an individual as an individual becomes more confident that he or she can accomplish a task. Some tasks, such as academic achievement or athletic ability, tend to reinforce self-efficacy when you are a child.
Other activities such as musical intelligence or public speaking ability tend to reinforce self-efficacy as you grow into adulthood. Bandura claimed that there were four scores for self-efficacy mastery, modeling, persuasion, and physiological factors. To improve your self-efficacy, it is necessary to address one or more of these sources. Mastery experiences. experiences. Mastery experiences. Bandura believed that the best way to develop self-efficacy toward a particular task was through mastery of the subject. Success leads toward additional successes and failure can, da can cast doubt on the outcome of future attempts. When you succeed at something, you are more likely to attempt it again. Social modeling. Knowing that a task is doable is key to successfully completing it. Most people are unlikely to undertake activities they believe are impossible. Bandura wrote that seeing others similar to yourself succeed reinforces the belief that you can also accomplish the same task. Verbal persuasion, physiological factors. So I can't go much further than this. I think we can associate this with with us. What exactly self-efficacy? I can take also another look. Self-efficacy. My main language is Portuguese, and so I can translate to Portuguese the word. To be efficient, auto efficacia is we doing something we need to do, which is positive. Auto. And Wikipedia, it states, is the extent or strength of one's belief in one's own ability to complete tasks and reach goals. Psychologists have studied self efficacy from several perspectives. Nothing, noting various paths in the development of self-efficacy, the dynamics of self-efficacy and lack thereof. In many different settings, interactions between self-efficacy and self-concept and habits of attribution that contribute to or detract from self-efficacy. This can be seen as the ability to persist and the person's ability to succeed with a task. As an example, self-efficacy directly relates to how long someone will stick to a workout regimen or a diet. High and low self-efficacy determine whether or not someone will choose to take on a challenging task or write it off as impossible. Self-efficacy affects every area of human endeavor. By determining the beliefs of a, a the beliefs a person holds regarding his or her power to affect situations, it strongly influences both the power a person the power it strongly influences both the power a person actually has to face challenges challenges competently and the choices a person is most likely to make. These effects are particularly particularly apparent apparent and compelling with regard to behaviors affecting health. Judge et al. 2002 argued the concepts of locus of control, neuroticism, generalized self-efficacy, which differs from Bandura's theory of self-efficacy and self-esteem measure the same single factor and demonstrated them to be related concepts.
states here the factors affecting self-efficacy. Bandura identifies core factors affecting self-efficacy, experience or inactive attainment, modeling or vicarious experience, social persuasion, physiological factors. Let's take a look at at this last two verbal and physiological factors that were present on the other document. I'm going to talk about the physiological. In stressful situations, people commonly exhibit signs of distress, shakes, aches and pains, fatigue, fear, nausea, etc. Perceptions of these responses in one's self can markedly alter self-efficacy. Getting butterflies in the stomach before public speaking will be interpreted by someone with low self-efficacy as a sign of inability, thus decreasing self-efficacy further, where high self-efficacy would lead to interpreting such physiological signs as a normal and unrelated to ability. It is one's belief in the implications of physiological responses that alter self-efficacy rather than the physiological response itself. I'm going to read here the I'm going to read this point to modeling or vicarious experience. Modeling is experience as if they can do it, I can do it as well. When we see someone succeeding, our own self-efficacy increases. Where we see people failing, our self-efficacy decreases. This process is most effectual when we see ourselves as similar to the model, although not as influential as direct experience. Modeling is particularly useful for people who are particularly unsure of themselves. Although not as influential as direct experience, modeling is particularly useful for people who are particularly un unsure of themselves. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this article and I hope you enjoy this uh, this video. Thank you for watching me.